are listening to Beyond the Whistle. Beyond the Whistle is the show that takes you beyond the X's and O's to provide tips and advice on the business of sports and how sports professionals can advance in their careers. Beyond the Whistle is brought to you by McCant Sports, a sports executive search and sports leadership consulting firm. Learn more at McCantSports.com. Welcome to Beyond the Whistle. I'm your host, Odell McCants, and thank you for listening. My guest today is a coach who has combined coaching and entrepreneurship to create a career helping others on and off the basketball court. On the court, okay. Khadija Head serves as the women's basketball associate head coach at Kennesaw State of the Atlantic Sun Conference. Prior to Kennesaw, Coach Head served on coaching staffs at the University of Arkansas, Middle Tennessee, and Pittsburgh. Off the court, Coach Head has been an example of dedication to continuous professional development, participating in the Emerging Administrators Academy, the NCAA Women's Coaches Academy, and the NCAA Black Coaches Achieving Coaches Excellence ACE program. A testament to her entrepreneurial spirit and in her spare time, which I don't know where she finds it, Coach Head leads her own internet marketing company, The Recruiting You, where she assists small businesses with web development and social media marketing. Coach Head also gives back to the coaching profession by helping other coaches with her quarterly career journal, which we'll dive into deeper and even have a special offer for you. Be sure to listen to the end. Coach Head, welcome to Beyond the Whistle. Thank you for having me today, Odell. So, Khadija, I want to start, I've highlighted there a little bit of your career, but could you walk us through uh, what your career journey has been? Uh, my career journey, uh, I would like to think it's been a straight line, uh, but the most important thing in my career journey has was a three-year gap that I experienced. My first full-time coaching job was at the University of Arkansas in 2005. I uh, spent two years with the Razorbacks under head coach Susie Gardner. Tremendous uh, experience that I had an opportunity to gain just because of my network. Coach Gardner was the head coach at Austin P when I was a player at Murray State. So she had name uh, recognition with me. After my two years there, I moved on to Middle Tennessee State University, where I worked on a head coach, Rick Enzel. I was there for three years and another uh, opportunity where Name recognition, another assistant, Allison Clark. We actually played against each other. She was at Tennessee Tech while I was at Murray State. She recommended me for the position, and that's when I first got my first taste of being a recruiting coordinator. I really enjoyed my time there at Middle Tennessee. And then in 2010, I received probably the most impactful uh, coaching position in my coaching career where I got a chance to work under my mentor, Agnes Baronado. At the University of Pittsburgh, I was there for three years and learned a tremendous amount. And I would say it's the the true foundation of who I am today began there in 2010. Uh, After University of Pittsburgh, I took a three year hiatus. I decided to venture out on my own and became an entrepreneur, opened my own Internet marketing company. And then in 2000, gosh, I guess it was 2016. Uh, Coach Baronado was hired at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm sorry, not the University of Pittsburgh, Kennesaw State University. And she asked that I would rejoin her. Uh, and being that I was from Atlanta and it was working for my mentor again, it was an opportunity I could not pass. And I'm currently the associate head coach and recruiting coordinator for her at Kennesaw State University. You know, when we think of networking and how important that is in your career, it's usually um, who you know or who you, uh, well, it's all about who you know, but who, who you've met along the way. But something that really stuck out in your journey there is your first two jobs were actually connections and networking you had uh, uh, with people who were opponents of yours, uh, 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 a coach in your conference and, and, a, and a player you played against. And how important is that for, for, for actually young athletes and even young coaches uh, to recognize that, you know, we're all, someone's watching all of us all all the time. Yes. I truly feel like everyone has something tremendous to offer. Uh, You should never judge someone by the title on their business card or the logo that they're, they wear on their polo. Uh, Working with coach Gardner, it was just something that by chance 
And then also for Rick Enzel, it was something by chance. And then with Coach Baronado, I've actually known her the longest. I've known her since I was probably about 18 years old. Uh, I started out as a camp counselor when she was the head coach at Georgia Tech. And, you know, I would always go back during the summer to play pickup because that's where you could find the pickup game. It was at Georgia Tech and she would come into the practice gym every June and say, you know, who wants to work camp? And I was going to be there anyway, and I needed gas money. And it was a is a win win situation for me. But every opportunity I've had, whether it be on the coaching side or with my internet marketing side, is all about going out and representing myself as my brand, not necessarily my title that I possess at the moment, but my aspiration, my dreams, my goals, and how I want to be viewed by others. So it's very important for you. Um, as a, as a young assistant and even, you know, as a veteran to make sure that you are shaping your brand in total, not just your brand at your particular position. Cause as we know, the coaching carousel changes and you don't want to be connected with a university. You always want to be connected with your individual brand. Great, great point there. Now going back, you mentioned you took a three year gap. Uh, and you stepped away from, from basketball. What was that time like for you? It was a, a challenging time for me. I started playing basketball when I was eight years old. And, you know, I played in high school, played in college, went right from college into graduate school, was a GA, uh, was a summer coach with the Georgia Metros. Basketball was entirely ingrained in my system. It was who I was. And for the first time in my, I, I can't remember, I was no longer affiliated as coach. And it, it was, I would like to say it was a midlife crisis for me. You, I went through my entire life identifying myself with this round ball. And for the first time in my life, I had no association with that ball. And I had to go out and really discover who I was and who I wanted to be. And, and what did you do d- during those during those three years? Is that w- when when you started your your business? Yes, that that's when I started my business. Uh, the first venture I pursued, like I said, I, I've only known the coaching profession, and so of course I got on Google and you know I wanted to find a way to make some money, and they told me that uh, certification in project management was a very lucrative mm-hmm. profession. So I took a two week boot camp uh, to learn about the project management profession. You have to take this intensive test where 80% of the people that take the test on the first time fail. And so I took that as a personal challenge. You know, I'm an athlete by trade. I got a chance to train myself. I studied for about two months, took the test, passed the test. And then I was at another stop point in my career. I, I still did not know how to translate my coaching skills into corporate America. I found the world of internet marketing. My family has a plumbing company here in Atlanta, Georgia. My mother and father founded it in 1981. And now my brother, he's the CEO of that plumbing company. And I wanted a way to help build my family business brand. Uh, I was well-versed in social media. So I got on Udemy, found an internet marketing course, found a mentor in Sean Marshall, Again, I trained myself and I started with my family's company. I taught myself how to build WordPress websites. I rebuilt my family's company business website. I started doing their Facebook marketing. And thankfully, through word of mouth, other plumbing companies, electricians, HVAC technicians, they would call the family business heads, plumbing sales and services as, hey, we love your website. Who did it? And lo and behold, you know, a business was created. So entrepreneurship is in your blood. Yes, I, I like to say I'm an entrepreneur by association. You know, I don't have a project management professional certification, but in one of my prior, prior lives, uh, I've worked on uh, project management teams and, and PMO roles on 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 projects, and yeah, you know, I, I, it's it taught me that success in anything is a process, and when we can manage. And, and learn how to manage that 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 process. Um, it makes it a lot easier for us along along the way. 
and how, how, how have you taken your uh, project management training and education and, and, and been able to apply it in, in, into coaching? Prior to doing my project management training, I thought I was the only one that could do my job as the recruiting coordinator. Um, post project management, I really learned the power in delegation. And with that, I had to release some of my power and understand that if I give someone a task and I explain it thoroughly, I have to remember two things that if the end product is not what I expected, the fault first comes to me as the teacher. When, when you give someone a task and it's delivered back incomplete, you first must look internally. How did I communicate my message? And then secondly, I had to humble myself and realize that everyone has their own process in delivering the end result. I can't hold everyone to my expectation that they will complete the project as I would. I had to be OK that the project was complete. Release the, the need for perfection and embrace the desire for completeness. Uh, did it deliver the message? And was it acceptable and presentable to the, our target audience? Do you see that in your coaching now? On, on, on I, the abso court? I absolutely do. Uh, I would say my first 10 years of coaching, I endured coaching. It was something that, you know, I showed up every day and I checked the box. Once I reentered the coaching profession, I love what I do because what I do is not limited to the win loss column. I truly embrace impact in the next generation of change makers and influences. Uh, the, the individuals that I interact with on a day to day basis, whether it be the members on our staff, uh, the administrators within our athletic department and also the players. If, if I can leave a piece of them with a piece of me, it, it's a win. I truly define what a win looked like to me. And since getting clarity on that, my career, my happiness, my ability to perform my job to the fullest has skyrocketed. Because I don't think we always take time to really think about what success looks like. Yes, in a coaching profession, we inevitably attach success with wins and losses. And if you're not coaching at UConn or Mississippi State, more than likely you're going to have more losses than wins. So you have to get clear on mm -hmm. what a win looks like to you. Um, and, and that's one thing that I take great pride in doing. At the end of the day, I realize I don't have bad days. I have bad moments in my day. My days are great because each day I go out and try to leave some type of positive influence on someone, even if it's just, you know, a smile, something as minimal as that. But I, I try to get a, at least one win a day. So. Well, you were in your third year of operating your your your, your business. Uh, what led you back to basketball? If Coach Baronado would not be in the coaching profession, I would not be in the coaching profession. Mm -hmm. My life was finally my life. As an entrepreneur, I could take vacation when I wanted to take vacation. I decided who I wanted to work with. If a client didn't check my boxes, I would move on to the next client. Uh, Coach Baronado set such a high standard for my expectation of a head coach. Now, she was someone that truly pours into the student athletes that train under her and the staff members that walk, that work alongside her. I didn't feel like any other head coach could meet that expectation that expectation she had set for me. And it would not be fair for me to go work under someone knowing my heart wasn't fully committed. And truth be told, she is the only head coach that I could see myself working for uh, the way that she nurtures the total person. Uh, you can't pass up on an opportunity like that. 
Yeah, you know, I, that's something that I admire in uh, in women who coach. In in many of the conversations I've had with women coaches, uh, there's been that that gap in a career, whether it's to start your business like yourself, uh, to have a child, and it seems like they've all come back be to the back to the game because of that relationship with a mentor type of former boss or and, and head coach. Yes. I, I feel like when you find people of value, uh, people that truly invest in you, uh, two things, one, you must give back to them. So one thing that I try to do with coach B in our mentor mentee relationship, I make sure it's a two way street. It's not always her pouring into me, uh, but she understands my aspirations beyond basketball and she's not afraid to allow me to venture and explore myself beyond the 94 feet because she understands that being an associate head coach and recruiting coordinator at Kennesaw State it is my primary responsibility and I take great joy and great pride in holding that title and she allows me to expand my wings knowing everything I learned outside of basketball I will bring it back into our program in some shape Form or fashion. So, Khadija, I discovered you uh, when I found the Quarterly Career Journal. And can you share uh, how 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 you came to 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 produce this, and what was your inspiration to create it? Now, truth be told, full disclosure. Before I create this product, I did not journal. I'm not a journaler. Uh, I I could find a million things to do at the end of my day rather than to write my thoughts in a notebook. Because if I committed my thoughts to a notebook, they would stare at me every single day. And it's something that I feared. But I also understood that in order to become the best version of me, I have to take every every experience that I have each day and reflect upon it. I can't have these one off experiences and repeat my same mistakes a week from now, two months from now, a year from now. I wanted to find a way to document my process. Something I wish I would have done early in my career is really write down my journey because You know, coaching is a tough profession. Uh, We have to deal with egos. Uh, We have to deal with our own self-identity. And if we don't have a way to, I call it brain dump. Every night I get a chance to brain dump. And I wanted a way to help other coaches like myself that, you know, had personal struggles, uh, both within their profession, uh, financially, And then also personally, to have a way to capture their thoughts. And I was like, hey, if this works for me, why not try to give someone out there who's searching for this same medium, but doesn't really know how to submit and get it out? You know, someone that doesn't like journaling, someone that's very protective of their thoughts. And I thought, hey. I'll just give it a whirl, see what happens. I'll throw it out there in the universe. And my career journal is not for everyone. Uh, it's for only one. It is for that only one person that's in desperate need of a way to g- gain clarity. Someone that really wants to, you know, take control of their coaching career and someone that has, you know, s- dreams of how they envision their life to be and they don't see their life on a track and they just need a way to change course. And, and I hope the quarterly career journal can be that foundation for them. You know, as a coach, you spend so much time, you know, all, all of your time uh, teaching and guiding and leading others. How did you go about finding that time for that brain dump and for that self-reflection? Back in September, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a very influential person. So, you know, I was reading a, a blog post by James Clear. He talked about waking up at 5 a.m. Successful people wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning. 
And I thought, you know, maybe I'll try to wake up at 5 a.m. Uh, I started my alarm at 6.15. I would eventually get out of my bed at 6.30. And by mid-September, you know, I, I moved my cell phone on the other side of my room. So I will be forced to wake out of my wake up out of my bed, get up and start my day. And from five o'clock to about 745 each day, that is by far my most creative time. There is zero noise, zero distraction. The rest of the world is sleep. And that is my most creative time where I'm able to, you know, come up with my thoughts, my ideas. Uh, that's the time I use to create the journal. And each night uh, at 10 o'clock p.m., I have a daily alarm on my iPhone that goes off and it says hashtag quarterly career journal. And that's my nightly reminder to before I rest, rest my head at night to pull out my journal and, and brain dump my thoughts. And my first goal in the first quarter of 2018 was just writing my journal every single day. And of the 90 days of the first quarter, I missed one one day and I held myself accountable. I didn't go back and write in that that day. I wrote did not write entry. But, you know, between five and seven forty five each morning and then post 10 p.m. each night. That's my me time. That is my non-negotiable with myself. Yeah, I'm a big believer in that early rise and in the, the 5 a.m. miracle. And what I've come to learn, it's taken a long time for me. And I, I think having a child and family and full time job, I finally realized that a successful day really starts the night before. And I, I'm mm-hmm. doing a much better job of getting more sleep. Um, but I think for me, the next step in that is to take that time and actually write down my thoughts and my and journal uh, my experiences uh, of, of the day and then what I want to accomplish the next day. I tell you, the best thing about my journal is to self-reflect at the end of the month and the end of the quarter and see how far I've come. Uh, I believe in the power of uh, the spoken word. Uh, your thoughts become your actions. So be careful what you think. Be careful of your self-talk. And when I look back and look at my goals and things I want to accomplish, I, I like to think my journal is a genie because whatever I write in this thing, it comes true. It's a miracle. Yeah, you know, and I, I think that's really important because in sports, we have the scoreboard uh, to kind of show us, you know, um, although I totally agree with you, you have to think about define what a win truly, truly is. It's not always just the scoreboard, but we have mm-hmm. that. But in our in our lives, it's hard to find that scoreboard. And I know there have been days when I feel like I haven't accomplished anything. But when I really, really look back on it, um, I have. And I think the problem was, was that that day before that night before I didn't really set out set off with my goals um and I have felt better in that self reflection and feel like and I can uh recognize what I have accomplished if if that yeah, makes sense I, I absolutely agree in the journal uh I ask you're asked five open ended questions each day and the two most important questions for me are what am I grateful for today And then the second question is, what do I want to accomplish tomorrow? The what I'm grateful for question forces me to find my ray of sunshine in in the gloomiest day I may have. And then what I want to accomplish tomorrow, it really jump starts my day at 501. I know what my first goal is. I I get up every morning, 5 a.m. First thing I do, my feet touch the ground. I say thank you because I know I'm grateful to have this day. I make my bed. That's my first win of the day. And I go to that question. What am I going to accomplish today before I start my coaching day by 8 a.m.? And, and it really forces me to go into Kennesaw State with, you know, three wins on my belt. I wake up at 5 a.m. I make my bed and I've already accomplished that one thing I wanted to do. So no matter how my day goes that day, I already know I got three wins in the bank. Very important. Very important. And what made you decide on a quarterly journal? The reason I decided to go with a quarterly journal, I felt like 30 days was too short of a time to see change. And 
12 months, that was too long. I would get lost in my 12 month goals. I would find myself making a New Year's resolution, vowing that every December next year would be different. And I get around to March and I'm in my same rut of doing my same thing every single day. And with that 90 day sprint, it gives me 90 days to to make a small, small goal and work towards that goal. And when I pace four 90 day cycles together, it makes for a wonderful 12 year span. And I don't necessarily accomplish everything I want to accomplish within that 90 day span, but more times than not, I accomplish more than I intended to accomplish, but in different avenues, different venues. And, and it gives me a why and a, and a way to constantly push myself and hold my account, myself accountable. And my 90 day cycle is a check and balance system for me. Yeah. I know of overwhelm when you set these big goals and I, I agree with you that the three months, nine, 90 days is a good measure. And you, you can see, you, you can see change and in success or, or recognize things that you need to do differently. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I think we all just kind of, we, we, we drown in these big goals that we set for ourselves looking at it on a, on an annual basis. Yes. I, I feel like that we overestimate what we can do in a day and we underestimate what we can do in a year. Mm, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yes. And how have you been getting the word out and getting this quarterly career journal out to to other coaches? I truly believe that the more you give, the more you receive. Uh, The very first quarter uh, I printed, went to the Staples, printed 10 color copies of the journal, and I just sent it to people within my network that I thought would benefit From that, I didn't know if they journal or not. Uh, I didn't ask for anything in return. I just wanted a way to help people. And then by the second quarter, word of mouth had got out. I picked four more people of influence that I wanted to share my journal with. And the second quarter, oh my gosh, this thing, it, it, it took off to unbelievable heights. You know, I just hope to, to sell one journal when I first started. I thought, man, if I sell one journal, I made a difference. And the return on my investment that I received in the second quarter was phenomenal. Uh, And the way that I kind of get it out there, I'm a big advocate of my brand on Twitter. So I like to to share uh, the insides and outsides of my journal. Um, I use my Ability to build WordPress websites to uh, create my head coach head website and everything that's connected with the quarterly career journal uh, on the Internet. It, there are things that I build from you know my Internet marketing toolbox and every journal that I give away. My only thing I ask that, you know, if you enjoy the journal, if you could provide me a testimonial for the following quarter, because coaches and administrators we're people of influence and we're easily influenced that if we see someone that looks and act like us on this track and we see them being successful, we want to jump on a bandwagon. So uh, I use social media. I use my personal branding and I use my personal network to kind of get the word of mouth out about the quarterly career journal. If there are coaches that have an interest and it may not even be sports related of an entrepreneurial interest, maybe looking to earn additional income or create a, uh, maybe even an exit strategy for themselves or a fallback uh, career to coaching. Uh, how, wh- what is your advice on, on, on approaching that in entrepreneurism as a, as a coach? Uh, my first thing would be is to find out what you enjoy outside of coaching. And that was the biggest struggle for me. Because I've on, I only knew coaching and I didn't know, like I, I couldn't comprehend how people would go to work on Monday, clock in at 8 a.m. And then on Friday at 5 p.m., clock out and go live this normal life on Saturday and Sunday. And be and done. Then, yep. <laughs> and be done. It was like, oh, my gosh, how how is that possible? You mean you don't take work home on Saturday and Sunday? You get 
you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, spring break, you get normal holidays off. So it it took me a while to kind of discover myself. And I was doing a temp job where I worked at a electrical supply company and I discovered podcasts and you would have thought I discovered gravity. You know, you know, it was this thing that always existed, but it never existed for me. And I found a podcast called Entrepreneur on Fire by John Lee Dumas. Yes. And I just start learning about these regular everyday people that, you know, created their own career path. And I was like, wow, if these people can do it, you know, I have my bachelor's degree. I have my master's degree. I have a certification in project management. I have my certification in scrum. Like I can do this. Like, what am I passionate about? I'm, I'm a coach. I'm a leader. I'm a person of influence. I have a lot to say. Let's start. Let's find me a platform and let's start speaking through the microphone and see if I can gain an audience. And, you know, I, I finally hit the right chord. And, you know, I have a great way to to share my stories. You know, we, in coaching, we always talk about how glamorous our life is. But coaching is a struggle. Coaching is a very difficult profession. And it's kind of taboo to talk about how tough coaching is. We sacrifice so much of ourselves. We take time away from self-care. We mm -hmm. take time away from our families and our friends. You know, we make sacrifices that normal people don't have to make on an everyday basis. And make sacrifices in, for, for, for others. For others. Yep. I mean, it, it is the consummate profession where we give, 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 and we, we forget so much about the most important person in the process, and, and it's ourselves. And that's my goal with my whole head coach head brand. I want other coaches to know, hey, you're not alone. I too was drowning one day till I decided to reach for my own life fest and start taking care of myself first. And the more I took care of myself, the better I was able to take care of others and be a better asset to my head coach, the other assistants on our staff, my student athletes. Because if I don't take care of self-care, I can't show up 100% for everyone else that's around me. Great words. Khadija, you've mentioned uh, your your website and you know, we've obviously talked about the Career Journal and Twitter. Can you share with us exactly where folks can can go to to connect with you? Absolutely. Uh, my biggest social media platform is Twitter. Uh, my handle is at head coach head and there's one H between coach and head and you'll find a pin tweet on my profile that will lead you to the sales page for the third quarter of the quarter quarterly career journal that starts July 1st to kind of give you a brief overview of the journal. Uh, you also get a chance to flip through virtually the entire, entire journal to kind of see if this is something that you will be interested in. Um, you can also visit my web, website, headcoachhead.com. You remember, it's all about branding, my Twitter and my website name. Uh, they're the same because I want you to know when you see the name and the logo, Head Coach Head, you know Khadija J. Head. And then also, uh, you can go on Amazon and type in Quarterly Career Journal. Uh, the journal's prime eligible and it will be delivered directly to your house. The turnaround time is about three days. Uh, if this is something you're interested in, you know, I encourage you to explore those three avenues. Again, it's Twitter at Head Coach Head, my personal website, headcoachhead.com, and then also on Amazon, just Google Quarterly Career Journal. And I'll have links to all of those in the show notes. And lastly, for listening to this episode, Coach Head has provided for you a free offer. And can you share with us what that offer is? Yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm a big advocate and believe, believer in giving. Uh, you can't ask of someone unless you're willing to invest in them. So I created a 14-day four, journal. Uh, it covers a two-week span. It's kind of... Um, the Cliff Notes version of the Quarterly Career Journal. Uh, each morning, you'll start with a daily affirmation, and each evening, you'll have a chance to answer those five open-ended questions to kind of reflect upon your day. And it's a way to kind of get you interested or give you a small sampling of what it would be like if you make that 
investment in purchasing the third quarter of the quarterly career journal. Uh, if you like it, you know, take the next step, purchase the quarterly career journal. If you really don't find it's up to your speed, uh, at least you know. Well, thank you, Coach. And that's, again, that's a special offer for listening to this episode of Beyond the Whistle, the 14-day career journal, where you can gain clarity, focus on what's important, and attain your career objectives. At headcoachhead.com forward slash podcast, you can sign up for that special offer, that free workbook. And is there any last parting words you'd like to, to share with us, Coach? Yes, I want to share a couple of resources that have really contributed to helping me become the person uh, I am today and kind of get clear on uh, the type of influence and impact I want to leave. Three books that I read religiously uh, each year, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Wattles, The Alchemist by Paulio Coelho. I have a tough time pronouncing his name, but The Alchemist. Uh, and then four podcasts uh, that I listen to throughout my workday, uh, the hundred dollar MBA, uh, Oprah Super Soul Conversations, uh, EO Fire by John Lee Dumas and Lore. Uh, Lore is kind of my guilty pleasure. It's built around urban legends. So it's a way to kind of disconnect from coaching and business and kind of, you know, relax and unwind for about 15 minutes a day. Yeah, well, I'm a big fan of podcasts. Of those four, uh, two are on my list, and I've <laughs> learned of two new ones. But so the thing I love about podcasts in this medium is that it's very intimate. You know, I, I don't have a lot of time to, to watch uh, things other than sports and basketball, I guess, but my time is very limited in watching. Um, but with podcasts, I can listen regardless of what I'm doing. I, you know, I'm doing the dishes or in the car or you know, yard work, whatever I'm working out, what, whatever I'm doing. And I also think there's this power of hearing the word right into your ears. Yes. You know, multitasking it is the secret power of college coaching. I, I love listening to podcasts. Like you said, it's a way to kind of gain knowledge subconsciously. And it, it's a way that I can feed and grow myself uh, each day. Uh, learning is an evergreen process. So whatever avenue that floats your boat, whether it's podcasts, reading physical books, listen to audio books. If you can just carve out just 10 minutes a day and a hundred dollar NBA podcast, it's just a 10 minute quick lesson that you can just, you know, get a quick nugget on your commute to work. It's, it's something to better yourself and make yourself 10 minutes better each 24 hour cycle. And I'm a listener as well. Khadija Head, Coach Head, thank you so much for your words today and for being on Beyond the Whistle. Thank you so much for having me today. It was a pleasure.